For me, when I do this, it gives me a really peaceful feeling of knowing that I'm doing something exactly the way my ancestors are doing it. I was born in 1941 in the parish of Acadia. And I kind of feel like that makes me a true Acadian because I was born in Acadia Parish. I had a great grandmother whose first name was Louisiana. And when I did my DNA on Ancestry, uh, when I got the returns uh, information, they said most of your family came from France and most of them came by way of Nova Scotia. I did not grow up seeing brown cotton in the community that I lived in. And of course, by that time, they were no longer growing brown cotton. My ancestors, they had to start their lives over because they were caught in what is called the Grand Derangement. They had to adapt to the Louisiana conditions. In Nova Scotia, they had been working with wool. And when they arrived, they realized it was much too warm to weave and spin with wool. Their uh, weaving, their clothing was made with the pretty white cotton and the new cotton that they found. They had never seen brown cotton. And of course in Nova Scotia, uh, they were not growing brown cotton. Their summers are not long enough. For the last 30 years, I had planted brown cotton. I have had a trap in my field and I have never had a cotton weevil. It's a law that's in place in Louisiana to protect the cotton growers. When my father was a cotton farmer, he remembers, he tells me the story that one day all of his neighbors grew white cotton, not brown, only white. But the cotton weevil started eating from the little town that I lived near, Mir, and it ate crops and my father could do nothing about it. He just sat and watched as the cotton weevils kept traveling and eating cotton crops. And it stopped eating the cotton two crops before it got to my dad. So we had money to live on for the rest of the year because that was our only cash crop. And my dad tells me that the people that had no money and no crops. They boarded their homes and they left Louisiana, went to Texas to work in the refineries and they never came back. We never saw those neighbors again. So that's why at one time cotton was king, but in Lafayette Parish where I live, uh, people are no longer growing the white cotton. When my children were older and uh, my daughter had left home, uh, we would visit uh, festivals like I did, and at that time, the, the boys would go out and visit with the blacksmith, and I would walk around and visit with Mrs. Clark, who was the Acadian brown cotton spinner there. And I was fascinated by what she was doing, and she told me, well, my mother, my grandmother, my great-grandmother did this. She was a fourth-generation spinner and weaver. So I, I met with Mrs. Clark, we became friends, and we applied for a grant through the state of Louisiana. Louisiana and I was able to work with Mrs. Clark for a year and it was really I really really enjoyed her friendship she was more like a mother and a friend to me I got the cotton seeds from Mrs. Clark my husband and I planted half an acre of brown cotton and since then I every year even though it's not very much I will de-seed the cotton. We do have a seed bank in Cade, Louisiana through uh, the university and they are storing the cotton seeds so I know now that the tradition that I have carried on that Mrs. Clark has carried on uh, as far as the cotton seed it will be preserved. I take a brown rolag, this is called a rolag, and a white rolag, and I spin them together. And this gives me the pretty duble effect. And I have asked people from 
Nova Scotia. Have you ever seen this done? And they're like, no, I think really only the Acadians did this. And I kind of think it is. So I kind of like to do what the, I do only what the Acadians did because this is a 250 year old tradition that only my ancestors did. These are basically the only colors that the Acadians had to work with the white cotton, the brown cotton, and indigo blue, which is really, really pretty. I did the duble in this piece. It's a, a runner, and it's done finer than a blanket, but it's the indigo blue and different shades of blue that I've grown. One thing that really, really intrigued me was that people would come up to me and they knew nothing about this tradition that the Acadians had for over 250 years. It's called l'amour de maman, a mother's love. When a daughter would marry, a mother would make for that daughter 12 blankets to bring into her marriage. Now to make a blanket, I think perhaps family helped. You know, the blanket would look something like this. This is one that I've made. And it would take many, many hours of work because the, the uh, brown cotton is such a short fiber. You have to stretch it out. Uh, you have to cord it and make the pretty row legs. And then from here, I can go to the spinning wheel. I can make my yarn. I do not do a lot of the blankets. I've made throws. What I generally do is what Mrs. Clark was doing. I'm following what she did. She did placemats and towels, and this is an example. For me, it's very, very important that this tradition does not die. When I think back about my ancestor, Pierre Richard and Marguerite Dugas coming in with Beausoleil, they had nothing but the clothing on their backs and they continued this tradition. And all of a sudden here in Acadiana, we have a tradition that's 250 years old and there's hardly anyone that's still doing this. How can we just let it go? I knew by demonstrating at festivals that people were really, really interested in our tradition. I do have an apprentice, the state of Louisiana. Uh, we applied for one, an apprenticeship, and a young man that I'm really happy to work with, he knows just everything that I have learned from Mrs. Clark, and he is going to carry on that tradition. I feel pretty sure that he will. And it's really important to me that the tradition does not die. It really is the fabric of Acadiana, of the Cajun people, because the blankets kept them warm in the winter time. They didn't have glass windows and screens like we do today. They certainly didn't have air conditioning or heating, but they, the blankets kept them warm and the clothing, they made clothing for their families. All of this was done out of love to keep their families warm.